day, brothers and sisters. My name is Dian Reyes, and I'm a full-time pastor of work of our community. I'm married to my beautiful wife, Kay, and together we are passionate about new evangelization. Today, brothers and sisters, I am with you to talk about going beyond the response to new evangelization. But before we do that, let's just uh, lead you. Let me lead you first to the prayer. Let's come before the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we'd like to praise and thank you, God, for this wonderful day you've given to us, Lord God, to have this workshop. Thank you, Lord God, for gathering us here, Lord God, for allowing us, Lord God, to have this technology, Lord God, in order, Lord God, to acquire new knowledge. And Lord, as we talk about new evangelization and the 500 years of Christianity here in the Philippines, Lord, we ask you, oh God, that you continue to open our hearts and minds and allow us, Lord God, to receive the grace that you want us to receive today. All of this we ask through the intercession of our dear Mama Mary as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now they are for death. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This year, the Philippines will mark half a millennium of Christianity in our country. It is indeed something to celebrate. For in 500 years of Christian faith in the country, it has not only survived, but it has only greatly impacted our culture and character of our nation. That is why the theme of our grand celebration in the church today is entitled Gifted to Give. So let me ask you a question. Do you consider your Catholic faith as a gift? And if it is, then how is your Catholic faith has been a gift for you? Think about it for a moment. I'm sure that our faith has been a blessing to all of us. Because of it, we have found our peace. When we are experiencing crisis in our lives, it is our faith that helps us find our peace. Our faith has helped us to find our hope. When we are experiencing pains in life, it is our faith that helps us find our hope to carry on. It has also helped us find our love. When we feel unworthy to be loved, it is our faith who directs us to the one who can love us unconditionally. Personally, it has been a blessing for me. Because of it, I have found my strength. Because of my faith, I was able to discover the different talents and skills that I have in life, which was further enhanced because of different services that I have in the church. If you think about it, our faith was not only a gift for us who are Catholics, but also to our fellow countrymen. I say this because the Philippines will not be the country that it is right now, if not for the witnessing of the passionate Catholic men and women who, by living out their faith, has shared their gifts to our nation. Did you know that our first schools, our first hospitals, our first orphanage, road system, and even our zoning system was started in one way or another by the church? They did it because they want to be a living witness of Christ so that they, will be, so that they can share and proclaim God's love to the world. Unfortunately, when you ask your non-community friends about what they know about the Catholic Church, their answer might come into one word and that is corruption. But the one word that, should they, that they should answer is civilization. They are so hung up to the image of Padre Damaso and the evils of colonization that they miss to see the hundreds of good priests, nuns, and lay leaders that live out their faith zealously and get out of their way to take care of our own people. That they don't recognize that what started out as a colonization has become a tool for evangelization for a very evangelistic group of people, which is us, the Filipinos, who long after the Spaniards left, has continued to keep the faith, whose devotion to the faith is recognized all over the world by their tireless effort to share the faith wherever they are, all because they have met Christ and now transform, they strive to live in Christ. And right now, they are very passionate in sharing Christ to the world. Do we really have something to celebrate about? Unfortunately, a lot of young people continue to miss the opportunity to meet and encounter Jesus in an intimate and personal way. I say this because I believe that most of the Catholics today are greatly catechized but never evangelized. I say this in spite of the fact that our country is a Catholic country and being one of the three countries in the world where they are the largest number of baptized Catholics. I say this in, sp in spite of the fact that the church in the Philippines is young, as our country is dominantly made of dynamic, passionate, and vibrant Filipino youth. 
And in spite of all these things, we have a Filipino Catholic youth who are catechized but never evangelized. Think about this. Our statistics says that only 18% of Catholics go to Mass every Sunday. That is 2 out of 10 Catholics who are not going to Sunday Mass. Is this true? Let me ask you a question. How many among your family members and friends do not go to Mass anymore? How many of them have turned to another sect or denomination? How many of them have turned away from being Catholics or are not practicing the faith anymore, has gone agnostic? You know, when two out of ten baptized Catholics are not living their faith anymore, then it means the Filipino Catholic youth are in, are in a crisis. They are in a crisis of faith. And when there's a crisis in faith, then there's a crisis of God. And this is the crisis that we face as we celebrate the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. As I look at our situation today, I remember the question Jesus asked in his disciples in Luke chapter 18, verse 8. It says there, When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? I don't want to make an impression that we in the church are not doing anything good. Actually, we're doing a lot of great things. There are so many ministers in the church. We are filled, our venues are filled with various church activities and organization and events. We have never fallen short of the intensity of sacrifices and generous effort of young people giving themselves to serve the church. We are really doing great and wonderful work in the church. But how does all of this address the more pressing concern that a very large majority of our Filipino Catholics have turned laps? What I'm trying to say is this. For all of our efforts in the church, we still miss to reach out to the lapsed Catholic. This because we're still in maintenance mode. What we do is just maintain those who are still in the church but have fallen short to bring back those who already left the church. So, as we celebrate the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines, what do we need to do now? It's simple. Share the gift of faith to everyone. And we can do this by doing these three simple steps. First, embrace new evangelization. What is new evangelization? Well, new evangelization is about renewing our zeal and passion to evangelize. You know, the message remains the same, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. What needs to be renewed is our passion and our zeal to evangelize. Just like what St. John Paul II said, what we need is a new way of, of doing things, finding new tools and methods, and finding new expression, how we could share the gospel, just like what Pope Benedict XVI said. That is new evangelization. But more than that, new evangelization is about renewing ourselves. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 17, it says there, people do not put new wine into old wine skin. Otherwise, the skins burst and the wine spills out and the skins are ruined. Rather, they pour new wine into fresh wine skins and both are preserved. We need to constantly renew ourselves to be effective witnesses, to be effective witnesses. We need to renew ourselves to capture this new outpouring of the Holy Spirit that will renew ourselves, our country, and our church. Second, make the initial proclamation. Romans chapter 10, verse 13 to 15 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how can they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how they can believe in Him in whom they have not heard? And how they can hear without someone to preach? And how can people preach unless they are sent? For people to accept, they need to hear about the good news from you and me. This is the process involved in evangelization. The process starts with the initial proclamation for people to hear the gospel so that they could meet Christ. How can we do that here in MFC? We have our CLS. But more than that, we have our LCS. In the CLS, we are called to evangelize our family and friends. But in the LCS, we are called to evangelize everyone. That's the challenge that I leave to you. Make initial proclamation through the LCS. But the Lord also has given us different programs 
in live Christ serve Christ that can do can that help us do new uh, initial proclamation by starting out your live the word hubs by presenting and giving live pure forums by presenting live life and sharing the live life forums by looking at poor communities and help them live their lives uh, to the dignity as son and daughters of God by giving them our live full programs Truly, the Lord has given us so much. We can give so much so that initial proclamation can happen in this great year of celebration. So, where should we go to proclaim? Well, we should go to our parishes. Let's go back to our parishes and share this beautiful program of Live Christ, Share Christ to them. Let's go to our workplaces where our, our workmates are dying to hear the good news. Let's go back to our families and friends. But most especially, let's go to the peripheries. Third, make a positive difference. It's about changing our priorities. It's all about making what is, what, what is more important, which is evangelization and mission, to be the top priority of every baptized Catholic. It is making evangelization and mission the most important work in the church today. It's all about urgency. It needs to happen now. We are in a crisis mode. We cannot waste time. We need to be intentional, focused, and deliberate. It's about newness. Newness of approach, of methodologies, of system, of medium, of expression. It's about creativity and sensitivity because the old ways have not worked anymore and there's a need for people to hear the good news. Lastly, it's all about making everyone involved. Every Catholic, every baptized Catholic needs to be involved. Especially the youth who comprise majority of the church. We have something like 6,000 priests nationwide. If we have 100 million Catholics and 80% goes to Mass and about 82 million are lapsed, if the 6,000 priests were to reach out to those lapsed Catholics, which are 82 million, that will translate into a ratio of one priest to reach 13,600 laps Catholic. By the looks of it, it doesn't have any future because the priests are already currently tied to the many ministries that they're doing for the faithful in the church. So this is my challenge to you, MC Singles. Make yourselves involved in the work of new evangelization. We're so used to the idea that when we evangelize, we bring people to the community. But not everyone is meant to be in a covenanted community such as ours. Not everyone is meant to be in a community such as ours. We need to wider our perspective and see the work of new evangelization by bringing lapsed Catholic back to the church. And God has given us the tool to make it happen. That is live Christ or Christ. So if you want to be a gift to the church this year, then I challenge you, Go back to your parishes, go back to your workplaces, and share the work of new evangelization through Live Christ, Share Christ. Share to them the different pillars that answers the need to evangelize the various sectors of our society. Share to them the pillars which is an answer to the signs of the times. Brothers and sisters, the Lord has given us a tool to make new evangelization happen. Let us embrace the mission of Live Christ, Share Christ, and let us mainstream lay Catholic evangelization. For that, may God be praised.